Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Oldish slash Reno Studios. I hope you're all doing well today. It's kind of a, a freezing rain, drizzly day here where I am. So uh, I'm happy to be with you instead of out there. Over the course of time, I get a lot of questions sent to me from people who are looking to stay in their homes forever. Because the more I talk about it, the more people are sort of realizing that they should probably take a little bit of control of the things that they have in their house and make their house more friendly, if you will, more able to cope with what they need better. And so to that end, I get a lot of questions sent in to me. And although I don't really do consulting on a one-to-one basis, I thought that some of these questions, which I have answered, by the way, most of which uh, there are are two or three that uh, were just sent in recently. So um, those people will be tuning in today. Uh, So I'm going to answer all these questions because I think there are a lot of you out there who will have similar questions. And if you do have questions, uh, send them in to me. I'm just going to put a little comment window where I can see it. If you have questions and you want to ask them as we go along, please feel free to do that. Just type them in the comment box below and I will see them here. Okay. All right. So let's get started. Uh, Mary sent in a question. She said she's renovating her kitchen. What should she consider? Okay. Lots of things. If, If you're doing a complete gut of your kitchen, which Should we assume you're doing that? I'm not sure, but you are doing some renovating. So let me give you a a little bit of a laundry list and you can incorporate the things that make sense to you in terms of how deeply you're renovating. So I would suggest two different heights of counters, one that you can stand at and one that you can sit at. So the, the sitting portion, it could be a place where you sit and have your breakfast or your lunch, but it's also uh, potentially a place where if you were ever in a wheelchair or a walker or needed to spend time seated to prepare your meals, this is where you could do it. Okay, so two different heights of counters would be really good. For the hardware, don't get the round knobs, D-shaped or U-shaped drawer pulls are what you want to do. That way you can open them with just a baby finger, a thumb, a couple of fingers. You could tie ropes or towels to them. If you had a service dog, the service dog could open them. So those are the better hardware pieces. Deep drawers instead of deep cupboards. So you know on your bottom cabinets, often people get... um, cabinets, cupboards, you just open them and and they're like way, way back is where all the stuff is. I would suggest drawers, deep drawers. Um, When I was renovating my kitchen many years ago, they called them bread drawers. Some people call them pot drawers. You want drawers because you can pull them out and they will be much easier for you to access your stuff. Now, If you're not renovating all of your cupboards, then what you could try is on the lower cupboards, try doing a modification that has pull-out drawers. That would be good too. If you pull out those drawers, then you don't have to reach all the way to the back, to the depths of the cave. That'd be good. If you are installing a new dishwasher, get it up off the floor, six inches at least, eight inches if you can. There's nothing that says we have to install dishwashers on the floor. And yet we do that. So how do you organize that? Well, you put it up six inches, eight inches, put a um, a drawer underneath that where you might have some pots and pans or linens or whatever you want to put there. And then above the dishwasher could be more cupboards. That might be where you keep your glasses. You, you're just organizing everything in a tower. So for the most part, we tend to put dishwashers underneath counter space. Just think about it a little differently. And then you won't have to bend over so far when you're unloading your dishwasher or even when you're loading it for that matter. An induction range or cooktop, highly recommend. 
uh, as people age, um, that is something that is very safe because it's cool to the touch. It responds to fry pans or pots or whatever that are magnetic to them. So all of the pots and pans that I have are able to go on an induction cooktop. You don't have to have anything super special, probably based on what you have now. So that'll be just fine. Um, Make sure the microwave is where you can see it. I know in in, um, my condo here, my microwave was installed way up high. I have to reach up to open the door and put things in and to hit the number keys to pick the time and so forth. I can't even begin to see what I'm cooking once I've put it in there. So that's just a bad location for a microwave. We tend to put them in above the stoves though and they and they have the uh, fans sometimes built in underneath. If you need to have it sitting on a counter, have it sitting on a counter. That's a good idea. Uh, make use of um, unused counter space. Oh, I want to go back to the induction range for a second. Make sure you get the controls at the front, at the very least along the side, but at the front is far better. You don't want to be reaching over hot boiling pots or um, fry pans or anything to reach controls. Have them at the front. Okay. Um, Unused spaces. So I've seen a lot of people getting really clever. And again, this is if you're renovating your cupboards they make use of the vertical spaces. So just a little narrow space that pulls out. It's like a drawer, but it pulls all the way out and it can hold spices. Really clever, right? Uh, It could be a towel drying rack. It could be for the lids of your pots. Uh, Just think of how you can make use of all of the vertical space in your kitchen. Really good thoughts. Um, let me know if you have any other thoughts, um, any other questions about your kitchen. I'm, I'm just not sure how deep the renovation goes. When you're done, don't put down throw rugs. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, Francis, my hips and knees are no good and it's hard to get out of my house. Is there anything I can do? So Francis and I corresponded a little bit and Francis sent pictures. Um, there are four steps and a porch, all concrete. It's a, a sort of 50s style house uh, with the door in the center and um, a, a porch that you could sit on, but then four steps. So first of all, you want to make sure you've got good railings there. That's uh, absolutely true. Um, I don't know how far the porch is from the road. So in any case, because you've got four steps, a stepless entry is probably not going to work for you. You're going to have to look more at a lift. So I believe very strongly that everybody should be given the dignity of going into and out of the front door. I know that a lot of people do stepless entry doors at the back door. A lot do it from the garage or through a side door. I think you should have the dignity of going in and out your front door. That being the case, um, most people think about ramps as things that go out long into their yard. I want you to think more horizontally. So you could do like a collapsed Z shape if you needed that much. I think with four steps, you probably would. So from, you can have your front steps where they are, essentially. But just off to the side of the steps, start the first horizontal ramp. Go to the end of your house. There's the turn and then the turn back. So you're not going out long, you're keeping everything very condensed with a turn that matches the horizontal plane of your house. And then what I would do is I would put some planting material in front of that ramp, just to give it a bit more aesthetic appeal. That's what I would do for your house, that horizontal 
shaped ramp. If you can't do that, then you're going to be looking at a lift and that's fine. Make sure you get an accessibility contractor to install that for you because they're going to know exactly what to do because from the picture you sent me, the um, the doorstep, th- there's a step up to the door. That's going to have to be mitigated as well. So it's not just the ramp going up to the door or up to the porch. It's actually the piece of getting into the house that's something that you're going to need to deal with. So um, those are two suggestions for you, but you do need to find somebody who is experienced in accessibility. If you are in Canada, Francis, I can recommend some contractors to you. If you are outside of Canada, I'll see what I can do, but let me know. Okay, Um, Brenda, powder room on the main floor. Can we make that into a full bathroom? Possibly. I don't know the footprint of your house. Is there space you can steal from an adjacent room to where that powder room is? Powder rooms are usually pretty little. So what's around it? Is there a closet? Is there a a dining room or family room behind it? Is there something you can carve some space out of um, that you can get at least a five by five room? And five by five is important because that's the turning radius needed for a wheelchair. So that's what I would look at. Um, I would also not discount the idea of a wet room. Do some research into that. They are extremely popular in Asia, in Asian countries, wet rooms. They are gaining some popularity here largely because they make a lot of sense in terms of using space in a room. Um, So a a wet room is basically a room that doesn't have a defined space for a shower, and yet there is a shower. The entire room needs to be waterproofed. And when you turn on the shower, it's possible that the entire room is going to get wet. And that's fine. I mean, it if everything is set up for it, it's really not an issue. The the floors can be sloped appropriately so that the water goes to the back of the area you've designated for the shower. So there, there are things that you can do. Stealing room is probably going to be the preferable option for you. Stealing room from, or stealing footprint really, from another room that is around that powder room, for starters. Try that. If that doesn't work, try the wet room. Uh, now, I, you know, speaking to the concerns that both Francis and Brenda have, the elephant in the room here is that the quickest way that somebody will be told they are no longer able to stay in their house is if they can't get in and out of their house independently and or they can't use their washroom and keep themselves clean. So if your washroom's on the second floor and you can't do those stairs, or you have only a little sink in a powder room on a main floor to bathe yourself in, that's not gonna work. So when you're doing renovations on your house, you really need to consider that potential, okay? We want you to stay in your house as long as possible, but your house has to work with you. So making sure that you can get in and out of your house, which means mitigating stairs and that you have a full washroom that you can use with a sink and a toilet and a shower that you can get into, you know, a bathtub, but there's a point at which people cannot easily get into and out of bathtubs. So, Those are the things you need to consider having on the main floor of your home to be able to have your home be a forever home, okay? Uh, Anonymous. So this person did send this email to me, um, but wanted to remain anonymous because this individual is afraid to tell their children that they are falling, that this person is falling. 
because this person is afraid that if the children knew, they would take that person out of their home. So I'm, I'm going to respect your privacy on this. There are, there are a number of things you can do. But first of all, let's be clear about a fall. It's very serious. Falls are really, really serious. They are a quick way to long-term or nursing home care. So you really need to mitigate this quickly. The first thing I'm going to tell you is get yourself some hip protectors. You really have to protect your hips from fracture in the event of a fall. Now, disclaimer, my other company called Brown Healthcare sells a line of hip protectors called Hip Saver. Um, I don't carry them so that I can carry any old hip protector. I carry them because they're the best hip protector on the market. And I've carried them for, gosh, it, it must be almost 25 years now. It's, it's a very long time. They've been in business a long time. This is a company out of the U.S. I'm the Canadian distributor for them. And um, they are exceptionally good. If you are in Canada, you can go to brownhealthcare.com and you can find the hip protectors. If you are in the U.S., hipsaver.com will get you there. If you are in any other country in the world, I know we have viewers from England and Australia um, and France as well then you can go to hipsaver.com and you can find their international distributors, okay? So you can do that. If you don't want that particular brand, if your doctor rec recommends something else, then that's fine. Go, go get those, but get something on your hips. Really, really important. I also want to encourage you to exercise and specifically to undertake exercise that is good for balance. So yoga or Tai Chi. You can find classes in both on YouTube. Highly suggest you tie into some of those. There's chair yoga. There's, I mean, there is yoga for any level of competence, as well as from the beginning stage right through to somebody who's more experienced. Yoga or Tai Chi. Make sure you drink enough water. If you're not properly hydrated, that can lead to dizziness, which can lead to a fall. If you don't want to be up in the night going pee and disturbing your sleep, that's fine. Consume your water in the first two thirds of your day. Make sure you get enough water. What is it? Eight glasses of water a day? I know that they modify those amounts from time to time. Whatever the amount of water is that you're supposed to drink, drink it. And if you can drink more, drink it. Keep your body hydrated because that keeps your mind hydrated and keeps the disease away. Okay, there's that. Make sure you have railings and grab bars in place and that they function. A lot of times we have railings uh, leading to basements or leading upstairs or perhaps on our front or back porches. But if they haven't been checked in a while, they might be loose. You want to make sure that in the event of a fall, they're stable and they can hold your body weight. That's really important. And you want two railings, one on either side, not just one. You want a railing to grab with either hand. Okay? Make sure that you do that. Uh, keep things that you use frequently within your optimal reach zone. So the optimal reach zone is... You know, if you're standing in front of your cupboards, it's as high as you can comfortably reach and as low as you can comfortably reach without straining yourself or making yourself dizzy because you're reaching down too far and when you stand up, you get dizzy. That optimal reach zone is something you need to determine and keep the things that you use within that range. So if you use, you know, you might have a full serving of 12 plates and glasses and, you know, all that stuff. But if you only use four of them, then keep four of them where you can reach them. Put the rest someplace else where you don't need to reach them. 
make sure that you can reach everything. You don't want to be climbing on ladders. You don't want to be reaching higher than you can comfortably reach. Okay? So make sure that you do that. I would also encourage you to talk to your doctor. I know you don't want to talk to your children, but you should have a conversation with your doctor about osteoporosis. There are medications that can help if you do have osteoporosis. So if you haven't been tested for that, you should be tested. I'm not a doctor. I cannot tell you what you need. You need that sort of a workup from your doctor. Okay. You don't want to find out that, uh, you know, your bones are weak and had you been taking such and such a medication for the last year or two years, they wouldn't have been as weak. Okay. There are lots of ways to fall. Let's be clear for everybody watching. You can trip over something or you can, you can stumble, you can get dizzy and fall down. You can also be standing in one spot, turn your upper body to reach for something which causes your hip to fracture, which then causes you to fall. All right? Don't think of a fall only as tripping over the cat because that's just not always the way that it can happen. Of course, it goes without saying that you have to tuck the wires away. And speaking of cats and dogs, all of our pets, let's be sure that we are working on training them to stay out of our way. When they see us coming, they should be getting up and moving. You should not have to be stepping over them or taking a quick step around them. Train them to watch for you, okay? That will help with the falling piece. Um, I hope those suggestions help you. And I certainly understand that you want to stay in your home for as long as, as you possibly can. So be proactive and Take care of these things to uh, make sure that you are protecting yourself as best you can. Atula, where should we put the grab bars in my elderly father's bathroom? Atula, I don't know. I'm sorry to tell you, I do not know. I'm not an occupational therapist, but even if I were an occupational therapist, I don't know your father's specific needs. So, Let's speak to the contractors out there and to people who want to hire contractors. Don't just tell them, go put up a grab bar. Go whack up a grab bar anywhere is not the best solution. Atula, what you need to do is have an occupational therapist who works with your father come into the house and tell you, where the grab bars need to be so that they provide maximum benefit to your father. Um, If you don't have an OT that's working with your father, there are lots of them from whom you could buy one hour of time. That would be the best thing. Your elderly father may have needs that you're dealing with now, but you may not know what his needs will be a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. He could have a progressive condition or disease. The occupational therapist will know that and will know the best positioning of grab bars. Okay? So that goes for everybody out there. Don't just go whacking them up anywhere and say you've got a grab bar. You need the grab bars to be in the right spot. Otherwise, they won't be as useful to you. Okay? Okay. Mini writes, our contractor wants to put plywood behind the center third of our shower in case we want to put a grab rail in. Is that correct? So I guess, Mini, you're building a new shower or renovating a bathroom, and along with that, you're getting a new shower. And so not in the top third, but in the middle third, your contractor wants to put plywood, which is backing behind the tile. And you're asking if that is correct. It is correct to put it there, but I would encourage you to have your contractor put it everywhere because you don't know what you're going to need. In fact, you need to have backing in the entire bathroom, not just the shower. The entire bathroom should be backed. And I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you a story about a colleague who tells her own story of designing her bathroom 
and they put in backing all the way down to six inches above the floor. So they did the entire bathroom except for the bottom six inches. And then when they received the shower seat that they wanted to install, they realized that the anchor bar for that shower seat was meant to be installed near the floor where the floor and the wall joined. So definitely below that six inch off the floor threshold. So they had to go in from the hallway, take the drywall off from the hallway because it had already been tiled and put the backing in and then redrywall the hallway so that they could install the shower seat properly. You don't know what you don't know. Back up the entire bathroom and then you don't have to worry about where there is backing and where there isn't and whether or not you can safely install shower seats or grab bars anywhere that you might need them to be. All right. It's a bit of extra plywood, but do it all. That is my advice to you and your contractor. All right, Suzanne, I'm I'm just going to look here. There aren't any questions. That's fine. Hopefully everybody else's questions are answering your questions. Suzanne, I don't want my home to look like an institution, but my husband should have grab bars, particularly in the bathroom. Are there any that don't look ugly? I get this question all the time. I get it all the time. And here's the reality of it. There are some very beautiful grab bars out there. There are some grab bars that you would never know are grab bars because they double as towel bars and toilet paper holders and shampoo holders. They're beautiful. Um, I can recommend a company to you called Healthcraft. It's in Ontario, Canada. So you can look them up online. They have a website. You can find all of their grab bars. I believe they have three, I want to say three different lines in addition to to the ones that look institutional. Health craft, all one word, H-E-A-L-T-H-C-R-A-F-T, health craft. All right, that's where you can find them. Um, You know, it is not uncommon for people to have a traumatic event in their life and they're in rehab and they can't come home until a way is found for them to access their house, first of all, getting into their house, and secondly, use a bathroom. And so people are in a rush to just grab anything. And you go to the local hardware store and guess what? You find the grab bars that look institutional. But if you've got some time to plan this, and it sounds like, you know, some of our some of our writers do have time. Um, I mean, Atula, you're looking for grab bars for your father's bathroom. Uh, Brenda, you're looking to renovate a bathroom, you know, you've all got time to choose the beautiful ones. And then people will never know. You need to make sure there's proper backing. Here's a a hint, actually, that I give to a lot of people. Before the drywall and the tile goes up, no matter what room you are renovating, take pictures of it. Go around and catalog every wall of every room the ceiling, the floors before you get the floor on, if you can do that, but catalog as much of it as you can and then keep an organized file on your computer or print them out and keep them in a binder, whatever it is you want to do. And then you will know what's behind the walls and where you can attach things. That's a good hint, right? Yeah, I think it's a really good hint. Palma. Our house is carpeted. My elderly mother is coming to live with us and she uses a walker. Are there different wheels we can get for her walker that are specifically made for carpet? Uh, Not that I know of, Palma. I'm so sorry to tell you, not that I know of. The best advice I can give you, and your elderly mother will appreciate this, is take up the carpet and get rid of it. If you were an elderly person driving a walker or a wheelchair over carpet day in and day out, you might very quickly realize how much energy it takes for you to accomplish that just to get from point A to point B. 
It's really, really hard. You need to make sure that your elderly mother saves her energy for the things that are important and not for the things that can be mitigated. So I would get that carpet up and go with the hardwood floors that are underneath it. That's going to be the easiest thing for your mother. Sorry to tell you that, but it is the truth. Carpet is just going to be darn hard for her, and you're going to end up wheeling her over that carpet. And if you do that, you're going to discover what it's like to wheel over carpet because it's not going to be any easier for you to push a walker or wheelchair over carpet than it is for your elderly mother. Actually, it's going to be harder for her. All right, Richard, where can I find shelves that pull down like the one in your show? Okay, so Richard saw Real Life Renos, episode two, where we showed a pull-down shelf in a kitchen renovation. I don't know where that specific pull-down shelf came from, but I can tell you that you can look up a company called Rev a Shelf. That's R-E-V as in Victor, hyphen A, hyphen Shelf, Reva Shelf. Now they don't sell to homeowners. They sell to contractors. So you're going to have to figure out which one is best for you and have your contractor or your local home uh, building store order it for you from Reva Shelf. They are available in Canada and the U.S. You can also look in building stores and see what they've got. They may carry Reva Shelf, but they may carry other brands as well. I've seen some on Amazon, but be careful because you need to make sure that you know what you're getting. Otherwise, it's a lot of back and forth thing. But those pull-down shelves are pretty slick, aren't they? Chris, where can I find the boots you talked about with the good tread? Ah, yes, I have some here. I brought I brought one in to the office to show you. Uh, Mark's Work Warehouse. And it is the boots with Hyper Dry and Ice FX. Here's the boot. They are super, super comfortable. But you can see the Ice FX down here. Uh, where's the hyper dry? There's the hyper dry. The little tag that's right here. Hyper dry. So those are from Mark's Work Warehouse. And these are the boots that were tested at uh, Toronto Rehab, uh, where they test boots and shoes and they check they test the tread. Now these these have amazing tread. Absolutely amazing tread. I've worn them a lot this winter, and I'm not going outside today because it's freezing rain. But if I did go outside, I'd feel fine in those boots. But yes, Mark's Work Warehouse. Um, Mark's Work Warehouse is also in the States. So for our viewers in the U.S., uh, hopefully you can find them there. But they are amazing boots. They look nice. They're super comfortable. And they are rated number one at Toronto Rehab. And they tested several different kinds of boots and shoes. And they have been doing that for years. So it's not a one-off thing. They know what they're talking about. Paul, we're having a hard time finding a lot that will accommodate a bungalow-style house. If we build a two-story house, can we stay there forever? If you're building it, sure you can. Sure you can. I understand what you're saying, Paul. A, a lot of the lots are very narrow. They're, you know, 45 or 50 feet. And it's tough to accommodate a house that you want to have all on one level. So I understand that. If you set it upright, if you have um, a, a neighborhood that doesn't have architectural controls that prescribes some of the stuff that you must have and you have some options, set it upright and you're good to go. So no step entry. For sure, if you can do that, if you can do a no-step entry, um, that's going to depend a lot on uh, how far down they dig for the basements. We did a podcast. Actually, it was this show. I uh, played it last week. So if you look back on the oldish from last week, there was our second podcast with Ron Wickman, and he talked all about that. The location of the sewers and how to mitigate that and how 
building areas have to be designed in a certain way that, you know, you have to dig down further or you have to build it up in order to accommodate a no step entrance. So you can do that or you can do the um, preparation for a ramp that I talked about a little earlier when I was talking to, who was I talking to? I was talking to, oh yes. Yes, I was talking to Francis. Okay. Um, Yes, if you can set that up properly and create a ramp or make sure there is the kind of plug that is needed for a lift and kind of build that space into your design for the front of the house, that would be great. That'll get you in and out of the house. 36 inch doors, 40 if you can do them. I'm a big fan of a 40 inch front door. They just look spectacular and 36 inches at least though. Okay. They just, but they look spectacular, really substantial and beautiful. All right. Wider hallways, a full bath on the main floor with a curbless shower. Since you're building the house, you can do it this way to start with. I'm going to caution you. Don't just tell your contractor that you want a curbless shower and assume he knows what it means or she, you might have a she contractor. Don't just assume they know what it means. A lot of times they don't. So if they don't know, have them get in touch with me and I'll put them in touch with a company that can provide them with all the education and all the materials. Easy peasy, Canadian company in Quebec, easy, can do that. Uh, Line up the cupboards on all the floors. So second floor, first floor, basement, if you wish. Make sure you've got cupboards lined up there. Linen cupboards, spare junk cupboard, whatever cupboard downstairs. You know what you're doing when you line them up like that? You're creating an elevator shaft. Pretty clever, huh? That's the hard work done. That is the hard work done if you should need an elevator in the future. And I'm not just talking about, you know, a a fancy dancy elevator. It can be something as simple as a lift. Um, I don't know if you've seen them, but if you do some research online, it's like a, it's a piece of the floor with a railing around it and it just lifts up. It's, it's not the kind of elevator that you or I would get into in a hotel or a, a shopping mall. It's a home lift. If you set it up right, then that will be available to you should you or someone in your family ever need it. Install electrical outlets six inches higher than normal. Then you won't have to bend down so far. Install light switches and thermostats six inches lower than normal. I learned those tricks from Julie Sachuk who was on our Real Life Renos episode one. You can go back and you can watch her. She gives great advice. So just make sure that those things are installed at the proper heights and then you'll be able to turn them on and plug things in without bending over, whether you are standing or in a wheelchair at some point in the future. We talked about some things to do in the kitchen to an earlier email. Do all of those. We've talked about bathrooms, do that. Make sure your bathrooms can accommodate wheelchairs. You need that five foot turning radius, but having that full bathroom on the main floor. And if you can do it, you know, if if you're building a dining room or a den, think long-term that that room might be your master or your primary bedroom. Sorry, we don't use the term master anymore. Uh, It might be the primary bedroom at some point down the road. So think in terms of what that might look like for you and no carpet, no carpet. We've just gone through that. Uh, We've just gone through that with uh, a a previous email, Uh, Palma. Here we go. Palma, no carpet, hardwood, because carpet, you know, in terms of wellness, carpet is not a good thing anyway. It's really not a good thing. It harbors the dust and the germs and the mites. And we really need to think for our long-term health and well-being about what our house contributes to our health. 
carpet contributes nothing. Everything we bring into our house gives off gases, off gases, whether it's plastic or a material of some kind, it's the paint we put on the walls. So you've got to be very cognizant of that and mitigate these things. Uh, I have um, two air uh, machines in my apartment and they clean the air every eight minutes. So, you know, you can do that with a furnace as well. You can have that feature on a furnace that keeps your air clean. Uh, but f- carpet? No, on the carpet. Okay. So, okay, those are the questions that I have received. I do hope that that has been of some benefit to all of you. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put them in the comments below. Uh, if you're watching this on replay, let me know and put them in the in the uh, comments below. If you want some more advice, if you want to watch the shows that we've done, the videos, or listen to any of the podcasts, podcasts are always being added, then go to renostudios.com and you will find everything we've done there. You, you see the first two episodes of Real Life Renos, and you can find a bunch of podcasts under the audio tab. And there are some really, really clever people who are providing some really important information for all of us. And I do hope that you will find that useful as well, but definitely go check it out. Anyway, until next Wednesday at 12 noon, please take care of yourselves, take care of one another. I will see you next week. Bye.